rushing to DFW. I had some bad weather come through there yesterday, and, and I knew I was going to be late. And I go, well, heck, we're known for uh, rattlesnakes and tornadoes. Let me look through my, my, my uh, phone. Surely I can find a tornado that I can send to Teresa and tell her I've got bad weather, and that's why I'm not going to make it. So uh, it, it worked uh, very well. I'm honored to be here uh, to speak to you today. I'm Kenny Hansmeyer. I'm the executive director of the American Football Coaches National Child ID Program. The American Football Coaches Association is known for the crystal ball, the coaches trophy. Uh, if you're a Division I, uh, if you're a college football fan, uh, you've seen many times, not much in this state, y'all don't hold the trophy up very much. <laughs> but uh, Thanks, Kenny, appreciate you coming. Yeah. <laughs> But that is, our, uh, that is our crystal ball. And, you know, working with firefighters in other states, uh, what I find is you're, uh, our, our coaches coach teams. And you are a team. You know, I, I've uh, had the opportunity to eat in your fire departments. Uh, I've had a chance, and when that alarm goes off, thank God. I've never seen a reaction anywhere when that bell rings, what y'all do, and y'all get up very quickly to save lives. And, uh, you know, where we have a team, y'all joke around. I, I sit the bench in the NFL and their buddy Ryan for a couple of years, and, and going through college, you have those teammates, those jokes. I've, uh, I've learned a few more. Yeah, evidently, I like to play practical jokes on uh, everybody, and I've been told not to eat the donuts if they come from another <laughs> firehouse. So I have not eaten any donuts, any <laughs> firehouses, and will not. So I appreciate that. Again, I'm 54 years old, and I'm not afraid. I was taught a long time ago to you know, not be afraid of coming across the middle. I would still put on a headgear and go across the middle and not worry about getting hit. But if a candle catches a drape on fire in my house, I'm running out of that. I'll be the guy that's running in circles in the front yard waiting for y'all to get there. Y'all are taught you're cut from a different, God made y'all and he cut you from a different cloth. You're taught to run in. I'm taught to run out. I commend you for what you do. Uh, you, you know, you hear this, you're our heroes. What I've also learned is y'all have to fight for everything you get. I'm so appalled now that we did get to deal with firefighters that all you want is a fair wage. It's what Lou and them fight for for you every day. You hope uh, that you get a fair wage for what you do. You want a little retirement because you want to go fishing or go hunting when you retire. So you want a little money for that. And if you're hurt, you want to be taken care of. And uh, I will assure you, our coaches will support you on the house in the house in any state house, any congressional house in the country. If Lou needs something, our coaches will be there to march with you to get you the benefits that you need and because uh, you're part of this team now. 19 <laughs> 19 Thank you. 1997, Amber Hagerman was taken in Arlington, Texas, and good things come out of tragedy. Amber Alert, named after her that when a child is abducted immediately, an Amber Alert goes off in our communities. The National Child ID Program wasn't, uh, was started in 1998 after it took Amber's mother seven days to try to find fingerprint and DNA information. Coaches said, hey, we can do better. So we provided an in-home fingerprinting kit to our Division I universities in 1998. 90 days later, it was the, United States, it's the U.S.'s largest child ID program. We did uh, 2.4 million children. And let me remind you that it's an in-home fingerprinting kit. We're asking you to join us in an effort when parents get this kit and they fill it out, it takes five minutes, they, they put it up, they, they don't, it, goes, it doesn't go into a database. It's a gift of safety from the coaches and the firefighters and the NFL. And so we hope it's never used. But if it needs to, it's uh, something that they can turn over and help look for a missing child. To date, we're the world's largest child ID program. We've done over 42 million children in the United States and worldwide. And again, we're honored to be before you today. You are, uh, your organization, you know, I'm from Texas. We think everything's bigger and greater in Texas. Your association, Lou, Teresa, Hedy's uh, that, that runs your foundation, 
top notch, first class. Now, Lou's choice in football teams is not as much to be desired. I, I don't know. You know, might want to get him straight. We were trying to do something with Super Bowl winners, and we look back and I go, well, he likes Oakland. We'd have to go back a long way. <laughs> really, thanks, Kenny. Appreciate you being here. <laughs> um, I want to tell you, I'm going to get off. I've got to catch a flight. I can't uh, take another picture of a tornado. Y'all don't have tornadoes out here and tell my wife I'm going to be late, so I've got to have a picture of an earthquake if I miss this flight. <laughs> And we have, again, our coaches will support you through anything that you need. Anything that you need locally, uh, we will support you. Uh, our athletes are 100% uh, driven uh, in this partnership. We have tens of thousands of memorabilia that we give out uh, to raise funds for the program. Well, I'll talk a little bit, just real quick in a minute, um, about your raffle, but I'll, I'll close with that. In 1998, after we finished the program, Roger Stahlbeck called me and he said, Kenny, we were lining up helmets for athletes to sign and he'd signed 500 with uh, Troy Aikman and we were doing some different things to promote the program. And um, he said, you have anything from Walter? And I said, Walter? He said, Walter Payton. And I go, oh my God, no, we don't. He said, hey, well, get me 100 helmets. I'm going to call Walter and see if he'll sign those for the program, and that'll be a good way for us to kick this off in Chicago. So we sent those helmets up. Walter said he'd be happy to do it. We sent them up in the spring. Walter threw out a first pitch later that spring or that uh, early summer, and he didn't look good. And Roger called me, and he said, hey, do those helmets ever come back? And I said, no, sir. He said, well, Walter didn't look good in his first pitch. He's sick, and I'm worried about him. I want to call him and ask him, but I'm going to call him in reference to the helmets. Summer became fall. Helmets never came. Walter continued to get sick. Hardest working man in football, getting beat by cancer. Hardest working man in football. Got a phone call. On a Thursday in October, just trying to hustle up. It was Roger. It was uh, Halloween, right around Halloween. He said, hey, did that, those helmets got back yet? And I go, no, sir. And he goes, I've, I'm going to go ahead and call Walter and just see how he's doing. And I said, all right. And Friday rolled around. I was late in the office, about 5.30. My shipping man came in and he said, you're not going to believe this, there's some Chicago Bear helmets that I just unloaded. And I was very excited, went back there and signature looked strong. I was very, very excited and I picked up the phone and left Roger Stahlbeck a message at his office that those helmets had finally gotten there. Got a phone call Monday morning from Roger's secretary. He said, Kenny, I got your message. It's too late for Roger to call, it's going to be announced that Walter passed away this morning. I went back and sat with those helmets and I cried because I knew how special those helmets were and did them for children. But I didn't know why I cried, but I knew that they were special. Didn't know how special those were until two weeks later, I got a phone call from Connie Walter's wife said, Kenny, if you ever have a chance to honor Walter and his commitment and his courage, two words that defy the men and women in this room, commitment and courage. Tell this story about these helmets because you don't know the whole story. Walter went home to pass. She took him through the garage and there's those helmets and he said, you know, I, I made a promise to Roger I'd sign those helmets for those kids, for the coaches. I got to get those helmets signed. She said, no, you're going to go to bed. She said, Kenny, he bugged me daily. I brought those helmets to his deathbed three at a time for him to sign. Those are the last helmets that Walter signed. So 
to tell that story. Can you imagine being on your deathbed and you made a commitment and you followed through with that commitment? God almighty, what a, what a great thing. But you, every day, face death. You are the Walter Paytons of our community. You are the brave men and women that have great courage, great commitment. And by God, we love you for it. We've got a raffle going in the back. It's to raise money for the program, but it's also to ra uh, bring recognition. I know I'm going to get yelled at from the foundation for what I'm about to do because the foundation likes to make sure that the T's are crossed and the I's are dotted. Sometimes you get outside that just a little bit, but it's still okay. You got how many tickets you've got for sale out there? 300 tickets sold. 300 tickets. 300 tickets. If you can, this is what I'll do. This how I'm going to make the foundation mad. If y'all get to 300 tickets today, or by the time y'all end, whoever wins, I'm going to send you to the Pro Bowl. So you'll get to go to the Super Bowl next year, and I'll send you and your guest. And I'm going to tell you, if you're a man and you win these tickets, if you don't take your wife, you won't be married very long. <laughs> If you take a buddy with you from the fire station, get ready, there'll be rumors. <laughs> but could you imagine, now the, the hula ball, I mean, I'm sorry, the pro bowl is where it's either gonna be in Houston, uh, the NFL's deciding on it, or it's gonna go back to Hawaii next year. And the boy, you really will be ha having a lot of talking if you take your buddy to Hawaii with you, boy, wouldn't that be? <laughs> you won't be able to make it out of town. So what we want to do, we want to honor you, but we also want to get moving with the program. We want to make sure that, I think uh, Joe Montana signed 24 balls for this uh, event to kick this off. Some of those balls are here. If y'all will also, uh, if you have buy five tickets, you'll get a Joe Montana football. Um, and then when you take it home, put it on eBay. It's, it's probably worth about $750, so don't, you know, don't rush home too, too quick to get your money back. But if y'all will do that, I'll send somebody, if, whoever wins this uh, trip here, if y'all get rid of those tickets, I'll throw in a, a trip to the Pro Bowl. We'll fly you over, over put you there for three days and, uh, and uh, bring you back. And I, if it's in Hawaii, we'll put you at Hawaii. If it's in Houston, we'll, then you'll be spending a week down there going to the Pro Bowl, then going, going on to uh, the Super Bowl. We appreciate everything you do. God bless you uh, for what you do. And again, I'm going to tell you, have no doubt in your mind how good this organization is. This is the top, this is the state in America, this is the top state association. You got, you're going to give me that $20 bill? Because <laughs> I, I got to get out of here. All right, God bless you, gentlemen, ladies.